And we're continuing on the project. We're getting up there. I'm locked and loaded. Pair Nation's on. We're jamming. In the meantime, cleaned up my air box. Put some VLR on the engine cover. Clean the top of that half. Tidied up under the hood a little bit. And I got my socks all stuffed down in the valves, ready to go. Valves are cleaned. And now we're ready to take off those fuel rails. First thing we're going to do, we're going to relieve the pressure in the fuel system here. Right there is your Schrader. And do not lose this cap. I'm going to set it over on my workbench. My work table. I'm going to get a an old t-shirt. Cover this up. I'm going to get a screwdriver. And depress the little pinto in the center. It must have been sitting so long that there's no pressure in here because it's not squirting all over the place like I anticipated it would. Let's just check. And wear safety glasses. Cannot stress that enough. Yep, I'm pressing that all the way in and there's nothing. Alright. I'm going to disconnect to this sensor. in and then lift up. This great clip should come out. Carefully, not ham-fistedly like I did some of these other clips. Learn from my mistakes, folks. Carefully. Alright, now that we got that out, squeeze and lift. And the sensor is disconnected. Alright. And I notice there's going to be some zip ties. There's one here, and then there's one on each rail. And you're going to need to clip those off. And put new ones on when you're reassembling. Alright, got my clippers right on the side of this electrical connector. One and there's one. I gotta see if I can get this camera down in here. Off the tripod again. There's one right here. I got up. Sorry, I'm zoomed in. One right here. one here right here right there can't get on the end of it it's too shallow when you get the point it's right here so next up we're gonna take a 17 millimeter and we're gonna crack these three everywhere which I would believe is inevitable because fuel lines you know All right. one there one here and one here now that I found a spot to set my camera here these are the lines you're going to be removing. Up and out. 
And these instructions from Bosch tell me to discard this thing. Again, the clay way, clay says to keep them. But since I went ahead and bought those anyway, I decided to remove them. Now what you're gonna wanna do before you yank this fuel line, take an air nozzle and get, just blow everything off. Get all the dirt, dust, leaves, whatever, out of here. You don't want any of that stuff falling down in the injector bore. So the next thing we're gonna do is take a 13 millimeter, four bolts on each rail, four here and one, two, three, Wait, one, two, three, four, here. Can't really see it on the camera. There we go, eight of those. So before removing those rails, the two harnesses need to be disconnected and they are held on this little plate by these little push-in connectors. Red tab, push the tab, let's see, pull the tang up, push the tab out. Push. Tab have to come all the way out. Yeah, I could tell you the old 3100s and 3400s are easier to. Uh, at least they were consistent with their <laughs> damn electrical connectors. Okay, pry that tab up. Get this red connector out of here. Got it. Okay, and there's another one down here. How the hell does this one go together? So far back there. Same, same type of connector. This one's really good. Now, according to that Bosch website I'm on, it just says now pull the rails with the injectors. And looking down in there, there is no effing way that you can pop the clips off these injectors just to pull the rail. So I'm going to try finagling this rail out. I don't know how. I'm just going to start with a big BF screwdriver and see if it pops loose. Tight. Moving. <laughs> if I get something. Well, I'm going to fight with this and move the camera out of the way because I need to climb up on the header panel here. So I got a, I'm off to a promising start. I decided to try on the front bank here. I got this screwdriver right down along that part of the block. I wish this light would up somewhere. I could, there we go. So I started prying up on here and the rail started moving. And I think I got some of them out. Kind of sounds like it. I'm just gonna keep working my way down. Maybe. I heard one pop out. So 
I'm going to keep working on this. Maybe I can get it the rest of the way out. Try another implement instead of this screwdriver that I'm using. But yeah, this is where I started. Right there. I got some movement. You can see it's coming up there. I think I got number six out. So I'm just going to keep at it. Alright, so what I did is I took my channel locks and opened them up and I just used this as a prying tool. I tried, I got the front bank off and I, it just seemed impossible to scoot out, so I got the back bank loose instead. Now they're up. And I gotta try to wiggle these suckers out of here. It's just like they're both in the way. Doesn't matter what I do. I'm gonna try like hell to get these out. And I'll check. All right. back. I managed to squeeze the back rail out. Ooh, doggies. All right, we're just gonna set that on the bench. Those injectors are fouled up. Holy shit. So there's the back rail. All right. This front one should be cake now. I can just. Yeah, look at that. The front rail just comes right out. Oh, it's bad. I'm trying to do this one-handed because I'm not on the tripod. Get the connector out of there. Still kind of a pain. I figured with that other rail out of the way, it would have been a little easier to get out. All right, I gotta set the camera. All right, front bank is out. Uh, when I was down. Looking in the uh, bores, I found these two little pieces just sitting down in there. Well, it turns out they drop down inside the little spacers here. You can see. Kind of had me freaking out for a second there. I thought they came off the injectors, but nope, they came from here. So now I'm going to peel all this off. I suppose I should. Uh, show you what the little dirty uh, I don't know if I can get this down in here well that's the back bank anyway I was thinking of running a brass brush down in the bore there just to clean it up a little bit because there is some carbon around where those injectors seat What are you doing out here? Did you come come out here to help me? Always gotta see what's going on. Oh, go under the car. So now I'm trying to look at the rest of this harness. Trace it back, because that TSB says it rubs on the transmission, but on this car it goes nowhere near the transmission. It goes here, there's some wires exposed here, but uh, they don't look chafed or broken. And then it just runs across the back and out. I mean, I don't see where it could possibly chafe. So I don't know if I was just having, if it was the harness right at that injector. I don't know, but this was uh, number six right here, and that was the one giving me trouble. I'm just looking at that injector. Oh, and I also went in, sprayed some carb cleaner down the bores of those uh, injectors. It took my little, took my uh, this little wire brush, cleaned them up, and then uh, took a blue shop towel and cleaned them up. Those bores were getting kind of crusty. So, now it's time to uh, get these injectors off here. I'm going 
going to pry these clips off. I don't care about wrecking the injectors because I'm taking them off or I'm replacing them. But I'm going to try not to. So, I'm prying on the injector body or the fuel rail. Pry from the, okay, pry from the back. Pry the curled end. Let's start it. I can't get it the rest of the way now. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Man, this first one. Guess there's a learning curve here. Dub Rin. Ping. There we go. So I pried on this little part with the curve. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Yeah, there we go. Pried the screwdriver here and it went. And then I got this other end off and she shot straight out. Let's take a peek at that. So this, there's a pinch at the top there. Should probably unplug this before I start doing the clips. Let's see how that just comes off. Now with that clip gone. Oh, you can see there's another little horseshoe clip on the injector. Well, let's wiggle that sucker out of there. Or I don't know, try prying it maybe. Those Bosch instructions are pretty vague. Get this back on the table. It's spilling gas everywhere. Ping, there we go. He's out. As you can see, the blue O ring didn't come with it. So I'm going to have to pull this clip off here as well. See, it just slides off over the metal part. There's a spot for it right there. Okay, that's one. Now, I'm going to fish out the blue... <laughs> spill gas everywhere. Fish out the blue O-ring. There is gas pouring everywhere. So I'm going to repeat that six times. I think I'm going to leave the harness in place for right now. This is what it looks like with one injector out. I want to get a close up on that just to kind of show how it's supposed to go. And I went and got an old paint can, something to dump the gas into. Because once you pull that first injector out, the gas just starts pouring everywhere. You might want to try getting it to pour out of the fitting. I'm going to get a close up. Oh, if I don't drop it on the floor first, that was smooth. Get a close up of the back bank here. For reference, before I start tearing it apart. So I got this 15 16 open end. I'm going to replace the rail sensor. Boom. Right. That's 
that? It's getting a little toxic in here. So I have all all the injectors off of this bank. I pulled the clips off the old ones. I got three new ones queued up. Got the clips on them. And these three. I don't see why you'd need to get new ones. These are really robust. So next thing is you're gonna need to, when you pull the cap off here, this little blue o-ring get you some clean motor oil I think I'm just gonna pour a little in the cap this is like a I barely have any left in this quart so I'm just gonna put a little fresh clean oil around that and then attempt to get that back in the bore. Come on now. Okay. All right. Guess they go in a little easier than, than coming out. <laughs> We're stubborn. No, I have not removed the harness yet. I want to get these injectors in place. Okay. Man, these go in real easy. And I am going to save the old ones. Even though they claim the... I mean, the part numbers on these match up directly to the new ones and the Amazon uh, item that I ordered, they claim their factory original... Uh, AC Delco's No markings on the package, but you know for the price. I don't know We'll see if they're any good And if they're not I'll send the old ones out to get rebuilt and I'll do this all over again So now We got these on It's gonna be fun trying to get these clips back on now I think they should just snap back on. Ooh, no. Oh, no. Figured this would be the easiest way. I'm going to struggle with these. Yeah. All right, there's one little detail that you need to pay attention to. This clip, if you look on the edge there, I don't know if I can, ah, gotta get the camera to zoom on this. So there, right here, there's a bevel on the edge. I don't know if you can tell on the camera. But it goes, you have to have the bevel up to the top because if you don't that clip will not go on there you might be able to see it better here that won't focus but that corner is beveled don't turn it upside down because then you'll never get the clip on um, see it right there you can see that edge is oh I gotta get something to point to this thing right there right there that bevel has to be pointed down you can even see it on the left side there too make sure you install the clips like that or you'll never get that retaining clip back on there all right this guide i'm following is of no help on how to put these clips on but i found a way how to do it so i started putting these horseshoe clips on the injector 
So, like I was saying earlier, with that bevel facing up, get your clip with the with that pointing to the left. I'm, I went in and I got this, put it to the side, got it in here. You go down low, get low, get low. Sure, now I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> Camera shy. I got this stupid clip in. Yeah, of course it's not going to work for me now. It was really easy breezy too. Okay, I'll get this in. Trust me, you, you, you'll get this stupid thing in here. By hook or by crook, I'll get it in here. Well, anyways, so you get it in there. I'll get it straightened out. And then you rotate this injector like yay. And then you come over here. See, I put, damn it, I put it in upside down. Maybe that's why it wasn't going in. Yeah, I put it in upside down. Well, no wonder why it's not snapping in. Bingo! So, it's gonna go... This is gonna go towards the top here. Like this. I think. Is that how I have it over here? Yes. Like this. Okay. Like that. So... This up. Now you can just... That camera's not picking it up. Clip this on the side. Yeah, this one won't do it because this stupid harness is in the way. Okay. And make sure that clip is up on the top. Wow, should have recorded that first one I did because <laughs> it was on the end. So we're going to snap it in. Yeah, this makes it tougher with that damn standoff in the way. That other side, it just snapped right on. So that's in the way. <laughs> well, what I did is this snapped on real easy and then I just twisted the injector and it snapped in place but with this stupid standoff in the way it's giving me trouble see this stupid things in the way this It should just. Okay, there we go. Now it's somewhat on. Now. Man, why isn't this. Come on, camera. You just twist it back. that's easier said than done. Push that injector in too.
Yeah, see that? That needs to be engaged in there. It came out. That's a pain. But you can see I got this first one done, and that's the way I got that one. So I'm just going to keep struggling, and I'll check back when I got them all on. And good luck with your procedure the way you do it. Because that guide is no help. And then this, I noticed it's a little loose, but the, the ones I haven't even taken off yet have a little slop in them still. So, Clayway was right. You can reuse those clips. This one's really sloppy. So, I'm going to continue at it. All right, took forever, but now I have them all in, at least on the front bank. I'm going to go ahead and swap this harness out and make sure I have the correct one here. It's the one with the two pigtails on it. Yeah, don't fall on the floor there, dude. Yeah, these are awkward, so. Let me get everything out of the way. I'm going to take my little needle nose, pinch these little clips, and they pop right out. Okay, that one is loose. So let's line this other one up the same way. It's kind of not the same. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Now, I can plug the injectors in. Well, they don't make like a positive click. That one did. First one didn't. Oh, that one made a click. All right. Why did this first one not? It's on. Okay. Looking about the same, actually. And I don't know why I unplugged that. The instruction said to unplug that trail sensor, but let's see why that was necessary. Plug it back in here. Yeah, there we go. I don't think I'm going to replace that number six. All right, that's one rail down. So I didn't bore you with the details, but bank number two is done. New injectors. Clips are all back in place. And here we go. Here's one of the crusty old injectors. Let's see if I can focus on that. Too rusty. All right, time to put them back in the car. It's on that Bosch website I've been reading. It says nothing about putting any kind of oil on these Teflon seals going into the block. So, recalling how I removed we're gonna go opposite put the front bank in because these were kind of uh this was the one that was the pain to get out
instead of you watching me struggle, I will pause this and come back. All right, I managed to get it down in there. Now I'm just gonna make sure they're going down in the bore and I'm not squishing this harness. It's hard to see. I got these all lined up. They should be in the right spot. Yep, they're going in. Come on. This one is not. Putting those bolts in should seat them the rest of the way. I just gotta make sure I'm not I'm feeling around to make sure I'm not crushing anything. I don't know what this camera is picking up. But this is not fun. Get this down in there all the while trying not to destroy the wire harness. McLovin said, it's in. So now I got, got my eight bolts. Just drop these suckers back in there and make sure they, they got a long way to thread in. All right, so the Bosch article mentions the fuel rail bolts should be torqued to nine foot-pounds for the first pass, and then uh, 18 for the second. I got my little torque wrench out. The little one. Oh, well, I might need an extension for that one. Oh, where's my extension? This, there's no torque sequence either. I'm going to dial this up to 18. All right. 18 foot pounds. Let's start in the center this time. There we go. So, I grab my new high pressure line, and the instructions say you need to lightly, just lightly oil the fittings with some non silicon motor oil. I'm going to put the Schrader valve cap back on. So, my oil from earlier. on these threads just a little bit I want to get oil inside the 
fuel lines either. That would be no bueno. So now it says put this put them back on finger tight. I'm gonna make sure these holes go in the sockets. Start them finger tight. Pretty flexible. They have a ball and socket, where you want to, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we're finger tight now. I'm gonna try to get in there with my 17 millimeter claw foot. Set this for 12 foot pounds. Got 18 right now. 12. All right, 12 foot pounds. Jesus. There we go. That seems a little tight. Yeah, how the hell are you supposed to t <laughs> torque these without a... I mean, you can't get a real linear reading on this. See, I'm going kind of tight. I'm trying to hold it still for it. There we go. There we go. Now it says your next, uh, here we go. Ratchet it up to 24. Feels like it's. That's got to be close to 24. Trying to keep even pressure on this thing. Yeah, this thing doesn't. I feel like I'm going to snap these off. Dang. There's 24. This is quite the <laughs> man. It just doesn't feel right. It's like I'm going. It feels like I'm going too tight with it. Man. I only got 24 on that front one. There we go. All right. We are torqued. Okay. All that's left is to plug these connectors back in. And I probably should have snaked this one underneath here. Oh, they had zip ties on them too, now that I remember. Put this one back here. 
Where were zip ties? Zip tie them to the rails. That's right, because this one was zip tied down there. And it went under here. So there's the big connector. Plug it back in, push the red thing down. Oh, it is down already. Okay, this one. Where did you go? There it is. I think that one went underneath. Yeah, that's it. Push the red tab back in. Okay. I think I'll zip tie, put some zip ties back around here, here. I think there was one more. Oh, this one. The sensor. But uh, that about wraps up the... Oh, you know what? I'm not going to wrap it up. Nope. Hang on one second. I am going to reconnect the battery and prime that fuel system. Check the leaks. Obviously I can't start the motor. I'm going to throw all kinds of trouble codes. <laughs> I just want to turn the key on. I'm sure doing this I'm going to get a ton of codes. But I want to make sure I got no leakage and you know come to think of it the high pressure fuel pump you need to have the motor running ah, maybe I, ah, I don't want to turn it over no way no effing way Oh, that's just that oil I put on there. No, it's not leaking nowhere. The hell is that damn... Oh, that is the high pressure pump. Okay. I do not see any leaks. I'm sure they'd be spraying out real well, too, if it was. Nope. Nope. Okay. So, this is, uh, that wraps it up for part three. In the next video, I will be putting the intake back together. Whew! I'm glad this is done. Been waiting on doing this for how long and um, we'll see <laughs> in the next video whether the car starts or not so thank you for following along uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this if it was in any way helpful and we'll see you in the next video thanks for visiting Jack Wagon Garage peace out